Hello viewers, myself Onidban Ghosal from Mechanical Engineering Department, Abacus Institute of Engineering and Management. I am going to describe my presentation about machining and machine tools. I am very much thankful about my respected faculty, Honorable HOD of my Mechanical Engineering Department, Mr. Binoy Kumar and respected faculty of the particular subject, Mr. Krishna Gupta. Now coming to the first slide, that is the mechanics of the chips formation. What is the machining? Machining is the manufacturing process in which energy is expanded to remove excess material in the form of chips from the parent material with a suitably shaped device called cutting tool in order to obtain desired shape and size and accuracy. It may be the chief formation by shearing the tool has a rake angle of the alpha and a relief or the clearance angle. The shearing process in chief formation is similar to the motion of cards in a deck sliding against each other. The symmetric elation stress of the basic mechanics of the chiefs are hereby given. Next one is the types of chips. There are commonly three types of chips. First one is the continuous chip, second one is discontinuous or segmental chips and third one is continuous chip with the build up edge. Here a graph is given but the vertical slide represents the surface roughness and the horizontal surface is uh, the graph represent the cutting speed. But the zone 1 is the discontinuous chip, zone 2 is built up edge format and zone 3 is continuous chip with the built up edge. So next one is the continuous chips. The continuous chips are formed by the continuous plastic deformation of the metal without fracture in front of the cutting edge of the tool and is formed by the smooth flow of the chip up to the tool phase. Mild steel and copper are considered to be most desirable material for obtaining continuous chip. The condition is for the continuous chips is ductile uh, material, high cutting speed, small chip thickness, large rake angle, minimum friction of the chip on the tool face by polished tool face. So next one is the discontinuous chips or the segmental chip. Discontinuous chip is formed by the series of rupture occurring approximately perpendicular to the tool place face. Each chip element passing off along the tool face the chip element in the form of small segment may adhere loosely the each and other become slightly longer the chip break up into small segment that why that's why this is called the discontinuous or the segmental chips and the condition is for that the brittle material such as ci bronze large chip thickness low cutting speed next one is the continuous chip with the built up edge the built up edge is uh, performed by the, it is obtained by machining on the ductile material in this condition of the high local temperature and extreme pressure in the cutting and high friction in the tool chip interference may cause the work material to adhere or weld to the cutting edge of the tool and the built up edge changes it is during the cutting operation it first increase then decrease then again increase the condition for that the ductile material low cutting speed and small rake angle. Successive layer of work material are then added to the built up edge. Next one is the orthogonal cutting and the oblique cutting. First one is the oblique cutting. The cutting edge of the tool remains normal to the direction of the tool feed or work feed and the direction of the chief flow is normal to the cutting edge of the tool and where the cutting edge is larger than the cutting width. Example is grooving, parting, slotting, etc. Next one is oblique cutting. Oblique cutting is referred to the cutting angle of the tool force not make right angle to the direction of the motion and the chip makes an angle with the normal to the cutting edge and in oblique cutting three component of the force are considered. Cutting force, thrust force and radial force. Now going for the tool geometry designation here a picture of the single point 
turning tool where the face, cutting edge, back rake, nose rake, nose radius, side relief angle, side cutting edge angle and clear ends or end relief angle are hereby the given. This is called a single point turning tool or in short form SPTT. The designation of the single point turning tool or designation of the turning tool may be given by the American Standards Association or the ASA system, orthogonal leg system or ORS system or ISO old system. Another one is the normal rake system or the NRS or ISO new system and the maximum rake system or MRS. There are very these same time uh, systems of the designation of the single point turning tool. Next one is the ASA system of the tool designation where the uh, nomenclature of the tool is hereby given by these uh, points that is one is the reference planes where it is the pi r machining the longitudinal plane by the pi x and machining transfer uh, plane by the pi y and others one the nose radius approach angle in cutting edge angle side clearance angle back clearance angle side rake angle back rake angle. So total 7 number of elements here by given in the AC system of the tool designation. Hereby the picture is coming the drawing of the tool in ASA system. These are the side rake angle it is denoted by the pi x where the angle of the orientation of the tools rake surface from the reference plane and is measured on the machining longitudinal plane. Next one is the back rake angle where the angle of the orientation of the tools rake surface from the reference plane and measured on the machining transverse plane. Next one is the side clearance angle it is denoted by the alpha x. It is the angle of the orientation of the tool's principal flank surface from the cutting velocity vector. It is denoted by the V in the surface of C and measured on the main, uh, machine longitudinal plane. Next one is the back clearance angle. It is the angle of the orientation of the tool point. Another one is the ORS system of the tool designation. Where the no, uh, designation of the SPTT or the single point turning tools, the elements are the nose radius, principal cutting edge angle, auxiliary cutting edge angle, auxiliary orthogonal clearance angle, orthogonal clearance angle, orthogonal rake angle and the inclination uh, angle. That is uh, uh, the difference from the ASA system. So the elements uh, and the picture is of the drawing of tool in our system here by coming that the symmetrical drawing of a single point turning tool in the orthogonal rake system and the elements are uh, cheap elements of the ORS system are the orthogonal rake angle gamma uh, 0 and uh, inclination angle uh, and the uh, orthogonal clearance angle uh, auxiliary orthogonal clearance angle principal cutting edge angle auxiliary cutting edge angle nose radius all of the things here by the given on my uh, this uh, slide you can easily uh, read from uh, here and the next one is the tool wear and the tool uh, failure so uh, we know that the tool uh, where the, the in the rake angle of the tool geometry where the initially gamma is equal to zero as the rake angle increase and the graph uh, different types of graph uh, two types of graph here we given the where is the tool life is also a property of the workpiece material that is a higher the strength lower is optimum rake and the clearance angle as it denoted by the alpha increase tool life also increase sharply next one is the margin circle diagram assumption that is the orthogonal cutting in system it is the continuous shape with the built up edge where the single shear plane coefficient of the friction here the constant and the cutting speed is constant. Another one is the merchant circle diagrams. The picture is coming. Where the force in the chip segment from the job site. Shear force is given by the PS. And the force normal to the shear force is given by the PN. And from the tool side. R1 is R is equal to equilibrium. And R1 is equal to force plus normal to the rake surface. The circle drawing uh, is here was, uh, the given and the angle is uh, shown of the marching uh, circle diagram with a cutting force. 
Characteristics of the Merchant Circle Diagram is easy and quick and reasonably accurate determination of several other uh, forces. A few known force involved in machining and friction a chip tool interface and dynamic EL shear strength can be easily determined and Merchant Circle Diagram is valid only for the orthogonal cutting that is the most important. It is only valid only for the orthogonal cutting. And here is given by the uh, Martin circle diagrams um, equation. That is the final equation we coming from uh, evaluated that the 2 beta plus eta minus gamma is equal to 90 degree. That is the most important equation we are coming from the Martin circle uh, diagram. So, uh, the what the minimization of u given by d u by b and next one is a theory of earnest and the uh, margin the margins model for the orthogonal cutting is based on the assumption of that the shear angle which is denoted by beta 0 and the assumption where the tool edge is must be sharp shear plane is thin and orthogonal cutting rigid and elastic work material next one is the lee safford theory when the uh, based on the slip line theory suitable for the ductile material and then the assumption is the material is rigid and plastic behavior of the material is independent next one is the notation uh, there is the you are uh, showing that in the picture uh, the slip line field for the orthogonal cutting where the r is equal to resultant tool force beta is equal to mean friction angle of the tool face Shear plane angle, alpha is equal to rake angle, T is equal to uncut chip thickness and TC is equal to the chip uh, thickness. The triangle ABC is deformation zone and now is coming for the tool failure and the tool material. First open is the brittle fixture, brittle fracture and next one is the lack of from the stability. Next one is the abrasive wear. The abrasive wear is only the two types. First open is the crater wear and next one is the flank wear. In the uh, flank wear, the wear on the flank surface is called the flank wear and the crater wear the chip flows over the rake surface. Next, the properties of the tool material, it must be very very important of the tool material that is the RBF, the resistance to brittle fracture, where it must be resistant to brittle fracture and it can withstand high cutting force. And next one is the high temperature stability, it must be able to retain its form at high temperature and next one is the high abrasion wear resistance. The no material possesses all the three properties in order to enhance one we have to sacrifice other two. In this way the tool material is produced and next one is the tool wear. This is only the two types flank wear and cutter wear where the flank wear due to rubbing against the newly machined surface where first uh, occurs on the flank face of the tool in the form of the wear land. This is called the flank wear and the crater wear as a result of the chief flowing over rake surface where also occur on the rake surface. This is characteristic by the formation of a crater. This is called the crater wear. So next one is the flank wear. In the flank wear is characterized by a wear land or height HF. If the size of the reaches its maximum, then even after grinding the tool can be used. Okay, the graph uh, where the um, vertical line shows the tool flank wear and the horizontal line at the bottom is in the time of the cutting. That the initial the rapid e initial wear and next one is the crater wear. In the crater wear is characteristics by wear land where the other uh, vertical line is the life and next one is the uh, horizontal line is the shows that uh, time. And the uh, final equation is the H is suffix K is equal to E by L by 2 plus F where the E is equal to length of crater and uh, L is equal to length of uh, crater. Next one is the adhesive uh, wear uh, that uh, due to high pressure and temperature at tool chip interface there is a tendency of the hot chips uh, to weld on the tool rake face is the types of wear and the attrition if the size of the wear particles is very small and galling if the size is large this is called the adhesive wear and on the uh, chip breaks away by uh, picking particle of the cutting tool this leads to be a uh, crater uh, wear. This is uh, one of the most important types of wear called the adhesive wear. Next one is the abrasive wear. The most uh, common type of wear mechanism there is no welding. Abrasive wear occurs when mm, the hard particle or, the, or chips uh, uh, passes over the cutting tool face in steel alloys. It is caused by the oxides. And next one is the oxidation where this is the result of the chemical reaction between the tool surface and 
oxygen at high temperature it forms a layer of the oxidized on the surface when this layer is destroyed during the cutting process by abrasion another layer begins to form these are the two important types of wear and the picture uh, last one is the diffusion wear where it is, it is usually uh, caused by the atomic transfer between the contracting material under high pressure and the high temperature of condition and this phenomenon starts at uh, chip tool interface at such elevated uh, temperature some particles of the tool material diffuse uh, into the chip material. It can also happen that the some particles of the work material also diffuse into the tool material. Next one is the most important, the tool life uh, definition, the length of the time of satisfactory service or amount of the um, acceptable uh, output provided by a fresh tool prior to uh, uh, it is required to replace or recondition. That is the determination of the tool life. That is the cutting time to failure uh, the, uh, of which tool is contact with the job volume of the material to be removed uh, before failure an equivalent cutting, spool, uh, cutting speed and total time of operation. The Taylor's tool life uh, equation we are coming from the picture that is the with the help of experiment and experience it has been found out that the HF is really the limiting factor where the uh, symbol is on the log V is equal to K minus N log T where K is equal to log C, V is equal to denoted by cutting speed, T is equal to tool life and A N is equal to exponents of the uh, condition tested and C is equal to the Taylor's constant. From the curves tool life at various cutting speed, the tailored tool life equation is finally have given that the Vt suffix n is equal to C. And the, from the curves tool life at various cutting speed for critical was determined when these values were slotted on logarithmic coordinates. This is the tailored tool life uh, equation. Next one is the modified tool life Equation that is the in Taylor's tool life equation only the di uh, effect of variation of the cutting velocity V on the tool life has been considered but practically the variation in fade and depth of cut also play role in tool life for some extent that is the most important point here by given and taking into account the effects of all those parameters the Taylor's tool life equation has been modified that TL is equal to C by B in suffix of X uh, Y in suffix of S and uh, Z in suffix of T where the TL is equal to tool life in minute and C a constant depending mainly upon the tool work material and the limiting value of the V and X, Y and Z uh, exponents so called tool life uh, and the next one is the factors affecting the tool life that is the work piece material tool life is highly affected by the physical and chemical properties of the work piece material uh, harder the work piece lower is the tool life and the tool material tool life is also dependent on the tool material ideal tool material is all at speed has the same volume of material removed for a certain volume speed is different for the different material and the tool geometry the nose radius for uh, the increase in nose radius increases in T increase in V increases cutting force and chatter where is um, also occurs that are the factors that is affecting the most of the tool life and next one is the machinability mm, definition that the easy with which a given piece can be worked with a cutting tool is called the machinability and it depends upon the following factor chemical composition, structural properties, mechanical properties, physical properties and the uh, cutting uh, parameter. This is the definition of the machinability and it can be depend upon uh, the following factors which I have already told in this picture. Okay, thank you very much for uh, viewing my um, presentation and that's all from today's machining and machine tools presentation. Thank you very much.